After building over 400 plus landing pages in over 80 plus niches, I can spot conversion killers from a mile away. So when I hopped on a consultation call with the business owner in the hair loss treatment space and he pulled up this page while telling me he was struggling with low conversions, I wasn't super surprised. So instead of just giving him feedback on the call, I decided to record a full breakdown and turn it into a proper video. Because chances are, if he's dealing with these issues, so are a lot of you who are watching right now. So let me pull up my screen and walk you through exactly what's wrong and how to fix it step by step. As I mentioned, I actually spoke with this customer and they're predominantly running Google ads, but they're also running meta ads and they were converting at less than 1%. So they had to completely pause all of their advertising altogether. This is typically the exact process that I take whenever I'm auditing any prospect's website. The first area that I want to focus on is this top area immediately upon landing, right? This is where they're sending their Google Ads traffic. This top section is what we call the above the fold. This is the only section statistically that 60% of people never end up scrolling past. The second thing is that the above the fold is the only section that 100% of your users will see. This is the most critical section that you should be spending 80 to 90% of your efforts on. What we're going to do is use my high converting landing page framework, which is basically a blueprint of how you want to structure your page. I'll put a link in the description below for this to get access, but basically it's just a blueprint of how to structure your page you know, where to put what section, how to write the content. So let's actually compare our high converting landing page blueprint with the above the fold of the reference site here. Now, there's a couple big things right off the bat. The first thing is in our framework, right? We have the dream outcome and what's in it for me. Immediately within the first five seconds, you want to clearly articulate who you are, what you do, and what's in it for me. The mistake a lot of people make is what they do in their headline is they simply just explain who they are and what they do, right? And this is the biggest spot where this prospect is losing a ton of money on their ads is when I read this headline, stop hair loss without surgery, I already know that I'm coming to a page with the goal of stopping hair loss, right? I've clicked on an ad on Google. I've clicked on an ad on Meta. I would hope that you stop hair loss, but tell me why. Tell me the emotional benefit and the what's in it for me and the reason why I should really care and reach out. That is not immediately clear right now in the headline. I actually found this example here in the hair loss space. In the headline, discover what's causing your hair loss and see results in as few as four weeks. They're really quantifying the results and by saying in less than four weeks, and they're tying it to the actual results aspect as well. This is a lot more of a benefit-driven headline that is in the direction we want to go for. Here's another example of a great headline for our TRT client where you can see above the fold, we have end fatigue, boost energy, and regain sex drive in 30 days with an all-in-one TRT plan. Very hard hitting, very benefit driven, and immediately answering that question of what's in it for me in the first five seconds of reading it. The next big issue with the current site is we want to typically lead with the pain point in the sub headline, right? So stop doing X, no more Y, whatever the pain point is, and then complementing that with the solution, right? So our solution does X, Y, Z thing, right? Now, when you look at the copy here, none of this actually communicates, number one, the benefit. When you actually read it, it's leading Swiss center of expertise in hair loss. Our therapies are tailored to your specific form, hair loss, and designed for stress-free home use. It's just kind of generic fluff, but nothing is actually telling me about what may Makes your process proprietary, right? That needs to be immediately clear. The other fundamental issue is there's just way too much going on here, right? Like I have one line up here, another three lines over here, and another three lines over here, right? I would just want to consolidate this down into just one clean paragraph or three bullet points, right? Either or. Something that's a bit more scannable. The next thing on our list is having two forms of social proof, right? So you can see in our framework, we have social proof number one. And then we also have social proof number two, right? And ideally, we want to fit these both above the fold. Now, the big mistake that I see every single time I audit a website is people try to put social proof for the sake of putting it, but it's not actually relevant to their offering. When you look at the piece of social proof over here, highly competent, zero sales pressure, and a clear plan. I could put this for any company, right? I could put this for any niche and that could be applied. 
but give me something specific to hair loss, right? In fact, when I was speaking with this prospect, I and I just like looked at their site, when you scroll down, you can see they have all these great testimonials here. Why not put one of these above the fold, right? This customer in particular said, my hair is noticeably fuller and stronger. The results speak for themselves. That speaks a lot more to the transformation of stopping hair loss without surgery than just simply saying generic stuff like this. Here's an example for our lawn care client where we have two forms of social proof, right? We have the Google reviews at the very top right up over here. And then we also have the, you know, three reviews at the bottom over here. And we also have a review under the get a quote button. Now, I want to add a quick note here. If you're a busy founder and you want to make sure that you get the best possible information, head to the link in the description below where you can sign up for a fully personalized video audit. This is not going to be done by an offshore VA or somebody else on my team. This is going to be done by me personally, where I'm going to go way more in depth than what you're seeing in this video. I'll actually pull up your website or landing page and personally break down everything from copy, structure, design, layout, actually showing you what you need to do to immediately start getting more conversions. Everything will be fully personalized to your company and I'll even show you examples in your niche. Link in the description below. Now back to the video. The next thing here is the CTA button. So in our framework, we have the main action to take. Right now, the main action is all the way at the bottom. So it's kind of an unconventional layout. There's absolutely no reason for this, right? This should just be moved up here. And the second thing is in our framework, right? We have what we call reducing friction and FUDs, right? FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, doubts, and it's a concept in CRO in which you want to reduce FUDs as much as possible near the critical point of action, which in this case is the call to action button. Here's an example for our luxury closet client where right underneath the critical point of action, which is that, you know, book free design consult, we have response in less than 10 minutes, we have 0% interest financing, and we have lifetime warranty, right? So these are all things that reduce fear and uncertainty around actually reaching out. Now, the most important thing that's actually missing above the fold is an image or video that helps to reinforce your core value prop. When you look at the desktop version of their page, they simply just have a photo of their founder which doesn't really add any value whatsoever and doesn't really articulate or reinforce the value prop. And then on mobile, they don't even have an image at all. When we go back to this example here of this other landing page example in the hair loss space, right? You can see how they're actually showing the before and after in the above the fold, right? It's helping to reinforce that value prop, seeing results in as few as four weeks, right? It's actually related to that value prop there. Now, the final big conversion mistake above the fold is not understanding your traffic source. Because people already know they want to stop hair loss, what I would actually recommend here is putting a form above the fold. If you actually scroll down, like they have this Calendly form here, which I mentioned to the prospect, that you're adding so much friction by getting people to book an appointment as their first step. I would add a form above the fold capture immediate interest, especially for this offer. When you look at the reference site here, they actually put the form above the fold and they're probably killing it because they're using so many of my principles, right? I'm interested in hair loss. I search on Google. I see this headline, see results in as few as four weeks. I see this image, right? Which is showing the before and after. I see all the social proof. I see everything here. It's all one full package. I'm interested. I'm going to fill out the form, right? So you want to kind of think of it like all these little building blocks lead up to the full package and that's what actually gets a conversion to happen. This is an example for our laser eye surgery client where we did a very similar thing where we have the form above the fold. This is like the mobile design here and we typically follow this type of format for forms, right? Try to improve method. We go with headline, so get life-changing vision, right? The benefit of filling out the form. We go with, you know, two to three bullet points of what people can expect if they fill out the form. We have the form fields themselves and then right under that book a console button, we'll typically put some sort of social proof, so like a review or testimonial, or we'll also reduce FUDs, again, fear, uncertainty, doubts, right? So this is typically the method that we follow for the form. Just to show you how easy it is to actually change the copy, I'm going to do this live with you here. So we're going to copy all the information from this page and we're going to throw it into ChatGPT and just going to click enter. Next, we're going to use our landing page prompt framework, put a link in the description below where you can just copy this prompt, right? And just throw it into ChatGPT over here 
and click enter. And just like that, in a matter of less than one minute, I already have headlines that are so much better than what we have now, right? Feel like yourself again with visibly thicker hair in 90 days using lab compounded treatments tailored to your hair loss type, right? Stop the anxiety of daily shedding within weeks using a data-driven hair analysis and custom treatment plan. Restore fuller, stronger hair in as little as three months using XYZ. I actually went through the liberty of, you know, creating a quick mock-up just to help illustrate all of this in action for you guys. So, you know, headline here, get thicker, healthier hair in 12 weeks and walk into every room feeling confident again. We have social proof one up here and then social proof two up over here. We have that clean CTA button, get thicker hair now very benefit driven. And then we have the reduction of FUDs, right? Right underneath the CTA. Finally, we have that image over here that actually reinforces the value prop of, you know, feeling confident looking in the mirror. But again, I would actually show it before and after for this specific offer. Right after the above the fold and the social proof section, we typically have either the pain point section or we also have social proof. Now, again, this is going to depend on where your traffic is coming from and the intent of your audience. For something like Google Ads, it's pretty high intent. Somebody searching for hair loss treatment. We would actually swap the order of this and we would put the social proof above the pain point section. Now, when we look at success stories, there are so many issues wrong with this, right? The very first thing, and I see this every single time, is people use generic headlines like, here's what our clients say, right? Our testimonial, success stories, right? People already know they're looking at testimonials, right? So instead of saying those generic headlines, actually communicate the benefit in the headline itself. The second big issue is what I call visual hierarchy. So if you look at this image here, basically visual hierarchy is the flow of information from where you want people to look, right? So you will read this first, right? Then you'll read this line. Then you'll probably read this, then you'll probably read this, and then up here, at some point, you may come back to read this line. So it's kind of a, a creative way of just showing how through things like font style, through font weight, through color, through boldness, you can prioritize certain elements over others. When we go back to this example here, the big, big fundamental issue is there is no visual hierarchy. So this is the headline here but it almost looks the exact same like the body text over here. In fact, the body text actually stands out a little bit more than the headline, one could argue. When you look at the mobile design, it becomes even more apparent the lack of visual hierarchy where nothing really stands out between like the headline or the subheadline. People typically read top to bottom. So why are we putting the image underneath the testimonial when images do so much more selling than text, right? If I think of it from a hierarchy perspective, I would want to put the images first and then the text underneath it. Here's an example for our lawn care client where you can see the headline, right? It says trusted by 75,000 plus to turn their lawns from patchy to perfect, right? So we're highlighting the benefit in the headline. And then we have a very, very clean, simple layout, right? Where we're showing the image first because images do more selling. So that's the first thing we want people to see, but you can see the visual separation, right? The headline stands out, right? It's black, it's bold, it's a bigger font size. The body text pales in comparison, and there's basically a clear flow of information from top to bottom, right? And it just looks very, very clean and easy to digest. Final example here for our education client where the headline, right, trusted by 3,200 plus students to break self-doubt and build successful careers debt-free. If I just read that headline alone, I'm already sold, right? And then the reviews itself were kind of showing the before and after transformation. Right. So showing that, you know, before this person was this and now they're this. Right. So just a, a really effective way to showcase social proof. The next big issue that I spoke to this prospect about was their pain point section. So they have this section here. Right. Talk to us if you notice this, you keep seeing an unusual high number of hairs, your hair is in full and you want to understand the cause of your hair loss. Fundamentally, like these are all great pain points. But the issue is you're just telling me things that I hate but you're not telling me what you do in comparison, right? So when you look at our landing page framework, you can see how we clearly articulate that we want to address the largest pain point that you solve while also tying in your unique benefit, right? You need to typically do both. Here's an example for our physical therapy client. This is actually how you do a really strong pain to proof section. So frustrated after trying everything to fix dizziness, here's the real fix, right? So it's not just saying talk to us if, it's actually giving me incentive in the headline itself. And then we're going through all of the things that you've tried. So these are all the pain points, all the things you've tried. 
but you're still feeling this frustration. But we're actually talking about like the benefit. We're actually saying the good news is that you don't need to do this. You don't need more medication. You don't need to waste more money or time, right? You just need a new approach, one that actually works, right? So create that intrigue, create the pain point, but back it up with the actual solution. You have to do both. The next big thing as we look through our our framework here is we have multiple value prop sections, right? So value prop one, value prop two, value prop three. So when we go back to the page here, like they have... Some of the stuff here, stop the shedding, improve your hair quality, but no one is going to read this, right? Like no one's going to read all this text here. So what I told this prospect is you want to take all of these points you have here and basically disseminate this down to multiple value prop sections akin to this, right? Value prop one, value prop two, value prop three. So for our LASIK client, right? These are the value prop sections here, and you can see we're articulating the benefit in just a headline. Fast and pain-free 10-minute treatment for a lifetime of clear vision. If I just read that and I didn't even read the body text, I'm already sold. Relax with safety, first care, and ongoing support for full peace of mind, right? If I just read that headline, I'm already sold. Here's the last example for our fitness client, where again, the headlines are super benefit oriented and we're actually have these images of their virtual classes to kind of back up what we're talking about in their value prop, right? Even here, right? Enjoy a pain-free and capable life with guided live sessions tailored to your goals. Super benefit driven headline and the images all help to reinforce that. So after the value prop sections, you can see in our framework that we have more social proof. So we'll typically have two to three pieces of social proof per page, which if you look at the reference site here, they do not have that, right? They just have one section up here and that's it. No other social proof. So it's really weak. And then we're typically going to, you know, have a how it works section somewhere towards the middle or the end of the page. And again, with the how it works, we want to make sure that headline makes that perceived likelihood of achieving success high and effortless, right? But still tying it to a unique benefit. So when you look at the version here, this headline is is really, really poor, right? Analysis first and focus on doing the right thing. If I just read that, I have absolutely no idea why that benefits me or why I should care. If you compare that to our HVAC client, for example, right? We actually have that headline saying start living in comfort in three steps, right? So we're, we're tying that unique benefit and making it feel like it's so easy in just three simple steps, you can start living in comfort. Towards the bottom of the page, you're going to have your FAQ section right over here, which they currently do have. And then the final important section that a lot of people neglect is what I call the closer section, which is basically your last opportunity to get somebody to convert. So in their closer section here, they have want to know more. Again, why should I know more? Like, give me that reason why I should want to know more, right? So this is the framework we follow for the closer section, which is basically, you know, final recap, why should people take action today? Create that sense of urgency. You know, body text, basically that one final reason people should get in touch. You have your three value props over here. You know, CTA button, reduce your fear and uncertainty, add your social proof and have an image or video. So kind of just almost like a mini above the fold, if you will, right, that we talked about in the beginning of the video. Here's an example of the closer section for our lawn care client. So we have get the thick green lawn you've always wanted and impress your neighbors, right? So it gives me that one push as to why I should fill out the form. Uh, we have the social proof the rated 4.5 out of 5 3800 reviews you know we have that clear form on the right hand side so get your dream lawn today you know three check marks of what i can expect the form and then we have another piece of social proof with the review under the get a quote right so it's a really effective closer section you know compared to this one which is really poor now you just saw me fix a landing page which is going to be super helpful if you already have something up but if you want a blueprint on how to create a killer landing page from scratch Click here to go to the next video where I literally build out a full landing page from start to finish. And this is a landing page that I currently use in my own business. So you know I'm not holding anything back. See you over there.